I did that uh, I did as much filming as I could while we were flying that's the entrance but uh, it's difficult and also I'm very conscious of uh, safety so I want to make sure that it's all okay you can fast forward through this bit if you're not interested in how to get to the beach this uh, field on the left here there's quite a big field through there I think it belongs to the council and uh, they have uh, circuses on it when the circus is in town the thing about airfields is you're all constantly worried about whether they're going to be sold for development if they're going to build on it and apparently uh, the airfield's right in the middle of two developments but <laughs> the problem is one of them is the, probably the poorest poorest housing in the UK and the other one is is right you know like Richmond on Thames type snob houses so they don't really want the to be joined up <laughs> so I'm going to be careful not to get this phone nicked yeah that's the field actually I'll show you the entrance in a minute there's very few airfields that are sort of uh, got uh, attractions nearby there are you know that aren't outrageous uh, for example you can uh, some blackberries everybody's had all the half decent ones haven't they well I don't know though still I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try it I've got plenty of blackberries in my freezer yeah so what you want is an airfield that's not too far away that's right next to you know a fun fair or something uh, that's the entrance to the uh, to the field so uh, that old uh, maypole was uh, closed down but that was nice not that it had much next to it but it had a really nice pub so you could you could literally walk off the airfield and into the pub have a nice lunch and then uh, and then go back to wherever you've flown in from Clacton Golf Club thriving wouldn't think so would you Clacton's supposed to be desperately poor or is it Frinton that's the desperately poor bit I can't I can't remember I'm trying to stop this wobbling but hopefully Google will do a better job with the image stabilisation than I'm doing what else can I tell you some weird things what are those Ooh. Triffids this is what happens to land if you don't take any care of it, it just gets overgrown with uh, brambles some, some old buddliers the reason why it's overgrown is because um, Thorock Council which is where we are is probably the worst council in the country let's just check and see let's make sure nobody's going to run us over flying is a dangerous enough pastime without getting run over by cars yeah so Thorak <coughs> was a classic example of what not to do if you're a council and in the you know in ye olden days they didn't used to try and uh, invest their pension funds in anything other than treasury bonds they certainly wouldn't have put them in speculative 
investments in Iceland and lost a lot or uh, what Thorak did was they they came across this developer who was like a uh, very con convincing that's odd isn't it yeah look at that they built a wall but they couldn't go over the top of those manholes so they've had to put a recess in the wall so you can get the manhole covers up so yeah so they fell in love with this guy and gave him basically <laughs> gave him all the money <laughs> not only did they give him all the money they borrowed a load of money from other councils to uh, to give him and this bloke's got like you know private yacht private plane lives in Dubai and thorough council can't cut the grass so yeah so I would say it's a classic example of public bodies getting involved in or thinking that they're masters of the universe getting involved in stuff that they're really not uh, qualified to dabble in and which anybody would tell them that's uh, you know it's a risk high risk that's a nice plate on the front of that house isn't it That's a wolf howling at a tree. And in fact, it comes with sound effects because there's a dog next door that does the wolf howl. So, someone's gone to some bother to pour some concrete in a bucket, try and make sure that nobody parks up the curb. I can see, you can see, I think they've achieved quite a pleasing effect there. What they've done is they've prevented the council workers when they do come round once in a move a blue moon from actually cutting the grass and so it's ended up as a <laughs> two foot high grass and looks like someone's dumped six buckets of concrete on it now there's a house up here i'll show you it in a minute I don't think it's still there but they used to have a life-size Darth Vader in the uh, in the porch it's this one you can't see it you know every area has got these houses they're um, hidden from the road because the gardens have been allowed to overgrow I must get myself one of those. They're really good, aren't they? And they've got, you know, they've got window frames that have never been painted, but but for some reason are not all that rotten. And you never see anyone or any cars parked. I think that's changed now. It's this house on the left here. I think it had, must have had some sort of eccentric living in there and and they don't anymore. I'll watch out for here. some obviously some blue fruit on here. West Lodge, what does it say? There's some sign there that I can't read. Something something. No, I can't read it. Anyway. Parked on the lawn. Highly innovative. Here we are, look, here's the jungle. That keeps it hidden from the road. And that's good. That's a good running repair there, look. Someone's tied the fence onto a tree. This is very Essex, isn't it? Oh, we are in Essex, by the way. Let's just cross over. Ah, my man in the Porsche stopped, but he's off again, look. 
he can see me catching up and he's well he hasn't got a rearview mirror well I think he might have a rearview mirror looks as though this grass has just been cut doesn't it I'm speaking as an aficionado of grass cutting so I'll do do the best part of six acres myself every other week <laughs> nice new park bench huh? found a bit of money in the budget for that somewhere Now, that's where the seafront is. We've got the first peak of the seafront. So I'm going to sign off until we get down there. Talk to you in a minute. So, here we are. First thing we come to, Toby Carvery. Nice to, uh, it would be nice to go in there, but Toby Carvery is he's very popular in this part of the world. So I've been in there, tried to get a better lunch and realised that I was in the queue behind about 20 other people. So this is the place that I'm really heading for. So, but even this is jammed. Unbelievable. Still, I could probably find a table if I tried hard enough. Tides in anyway. Let's find a seat and have a little sit down. I suppose it is quarter past one. I don't know what I expect. This is the uh, lifeguards and down the coast there a bit there's the lifeboat. Look at that. Seems to have caught it at the exact moment of the high tide. Haven't you haven't really seen that? <laughs> you see you see that little beach down there with the people sitting on it. That my uh, family used to live on Canvey Island. And when the tide's in, that's about as big a beach as Canvey Island's got. And you'd see the whole of Canvey Island would be on this bit, this tri triangle of sand. Uh, anyway, there's there's some benches down there, so I'm gonna have a little sit down. You can, and if you're a bit keen-eyed, you can probably see the fun fair. So we might have a little wander around there. This looks like a good place to stop. Good thing is, it looks. If you look at the weather out there, it looks quite nice. Look at the weather over there. It's a different story entirely, isn't it? Fortunately, if I turn this way, the wind's blowing in my face, so I think I'd be all right. Just flew over there. Right, well, I think we'll have a little walk down towards the fun fair. Might even walk up the high street. Got all day. It's only 10 to 2. The airfield closes at 4, but they don't care if you haven't left by then. You can fly at any time. And uh, it's uh, basically, it's uh, official sunset. At 8.30, I think, so I have to be on the ground by 9, so I've, I don't intend to get anywhere near that, so it's going to be uh, just a walk down here and a walk back, perhaps get a sandwich or something and then uh, fly back. We're getting close. The uh, two things you have to have when you go to the seaside are sun cream and a jumper because when it's windy you know, there's a cold wind that comes in off the Thames estuary fortunately today it's not too bad so but I've still got a fleece with me because I'm not expecting rain so that's all I do that and credit card and we're set. Alright, I'll, uh, I'll let you know when we're there. The trouble, this video is killing my battery. It's about 36%. I've got it plugged in, but I'll have to sort of be a bit less, uh, you know, liberal with the old battery. There we are. Very close.
So. There's a lot of stuff here, but most of it seems to be closed. Mind you, it's the 4th of September, so I suppose it could be that the season's finished. I'm going to have a little walk down the end anyway. Might as well. It's a big old fashioned hel helter skelter, isn't it? There we are. So we're looking west off the pier towards South End, and we've walked all that way. <laughs> We have to walk all that way back as well. And there's the end of the pier. There's a restaurant which is open. Everywhere serves fish and chips around here, but I don't know whether I want to spend half an hour eating fish and chips. I'll probably just walk back, get an ice cream, and then and then fly back while the weather's still nice. Because it looks nice, but it's dodgy over here, and it's getting dodgy over there, which is where I'm going. So it won't be it won't be so dodgy that uh, I can't fly. There's my friends over there that have been with me this whole trip, following me, and they'll probably follow me back as well. Right, so that was Clacton. Yeah, oh, I'm feeling good. Like I knew I should. Every step you walk towards the pier, you've got to walk the same step back, so I've decided to come up the, uh, the higher of the two paths. Now, walking along like the middle, the middle path. So, my uh, sun cream saved me. My jacket wasn't required. I've got a bottle of water in my bag in case I get thirsty. I tend not to drink it, really. I just have a sip or a mouthful from time to time. Otherwise, uh, you end up having to go to the loo, you know, in the plane. And seeing as the plane doesn't have a loo, it can be somewhat tricky. Fortunately, there is a toilet along here, so I'll nip down and nip in there. You can usually tell where the toilet is because there's a plastic wheelie bin that someone's put their barbecue in that's caught fire and the council haven't taken it away yet. So. And my battery's going up. It's more than 33, it's some 50 now, so that's good. I'll uh, talk to you in a minute. Right, well, I'm back where we started at the calf. The Green Sward Calf, next to the Green Sward Adventure Golf on the Green Sward Beach. Marine paid West Clacton. And uh, they do fish and chips, but I have resisted the temptation. That's I wish I hadn't now. To have fish and chips, I'm going to have a cheese omelette, which is one of my favourites anyway. So, and and a banana milkshake. So my cheese omelette will be coming out, so you get a bit of salad with it as well. It's just anyway, when I've had that, we'll uh, start the walk back. Okay, talk to you soon. Right, that was a really nice cheese omelette. Gotta say, they couldn't have put any more cheese in there if they tried. It was literally melting on the plate. If they'd put any more cheese in it, it would have been melted cheese with a bit of egg in it. Here we go. So, we're just going to walk back. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. You probably notice it looks a bit more cloudy. The uh, weather's not so brilliant now. So I'll still 
don't think it'll be a problem. Funnily enough, my plane's pretty heavy, so it doesn't get blown about. A lot of modern planes are, um, uh, you know, made out of, they're very like pop-up tents, you know, they've got these aluminium stays and bits of wire. Tensioning it all, they're all compressed in tension, and that's what gives them the strength. Yeah, waiting for you. But um, it make, makes them very light, which is good, because you don't want any flying machine to be too heavy, do you? But it does make them pretty, uh, you know, they do blow about a bit. There's a lighter category. My plane, when it's fully loaded, with, let's say, three people and a, and a load of your bit of luggage, is 1,050 kilos, so just over one metric tonne. The uh, smaller planes, there's a cattle girl, I think it's called LSA, light sport aircraft, and they're allowed to be, I think the maximum is 600 kilos. So, uh, and uh, they're like, uh, you can do, the people who do those are, they're the sort of people who, you know, like, want to do aviation, but couldn't find £10,000 a year to spend on it, so <laughs> not that I can, and uh, and so they want something that's very cheap and cheerful and so something where they can A, do their own maintenance and B, uh, possibly even build the plane themselves, you know, certainly a case of anyone who can build an airfix kit can build an LSA aircraft, but uh, I wouldn't like to try and build mine. Anyway, that's it until we get back to the plane. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Right, here we go. Say goodbye to the clubhouse. Oh. Well, that's a fair old walk. I'll put that at about two miles plus. So that's quite good, isn't it? Not bad for a cheese omelette and a milkshake. Now, one plane has disappeared and one plane has arrived. Jeez, Zelda. That's one of those. Uh, this Jax is a aluminium frame like mine. Zelda, this will be a fabric frame. Look at the windsock, there's no wind. Huh. They've got these uh, like high visibility side doors on them. But I wouldn't like to go flying in that in the winter. Still, let's uh, get it unlocked and uh, I'll get in and then we'll be off. You can probably see that the um, fronts of the wings here have slid forward. They're called slats. They're quite um, a unique thing for planes. Uh, light aircraft anyway, all the jets have them. But basically it allows you to fly at uh, lower speeds without stalling. So it's a feature of this particular type of aircraft, the Rally. And it's also very good as an airspeed indicator because as you're coming into land if the slats pop out, because they're entirely unpowered, except by differential air pressures, when the slats pop out, you know you're pretty much at your landing speed. Right, there we go, let's get in.
Right, well, that's about as good as it's going to get for you, I'm afraid. But you will get to see the whole flight. So, that's a new version of Sky Demon available. Let's not do that now. I'll do that when I get home. So, are the controls full and free? Yes, they are. Here's the cabin ventilation heater off, yes. Parking brake, I've got the tow brakes on. Battery on. The generator is off, generator warning lights on, the uh, roof flaps we didn't extend so we've retracted them, the beacon on to indicate that we're going to start the prop, fuel selector off, check fuel levels, fullest tank, fuel pump on, mixture bridge, fuel pump on. So I'm going to switch over to the left tank now because uh, we flew here all the way on the right tank. So car beer cold, mixture rich, everything else looks happy, just prime, get my headset in. Noisy bugger. Right. So let's prime the engine. Get the keys down from where they're hanging. Here we go. Clear prop. So, generator on, fill up on, lead kicks on, lights on. Lights on. Lights on. So go flying.
Alright, let's just check. Not so up, bottles up. Little extra wedge car vehicles. Not for 10,000 RPM landing lights off. Stalk off. Comes off. Lights off. Electric turn indicator off. Got your fuel pump off. Generator off. Cut throttle. Uh. And uh, master off. And log on the blocks. Good. Oh, I forgot to turn the um, camera on before I was coming into land. There was no point capturing all the middle of the flight. And then when it comes to the exciting bit, the landing, of course I forgot to turn it on. It's concentrating too much. Oh, that's the first thing you do when you land. Get the, get the cockpit open so you can get a bit of fresh air in. Anyway, that's all went okay, didn't it? I hope you enjoyed that. Let me just turn the log the engine off, going back to planning mode. Going back to being off mode. Check. Keys out and up on the hook. Ooh, what have I done? I'll have to check. There's so much crap on the grass underneath this plank. Honestly, I'm always, I'm always dropping stuff. That's bolts, bits of safety equipment. Let's uh, get myself disentangled. It's a thin man's game, aviation. My pilot's always so slim. Nah, I'm a fat man. Sleeping with all that bloody stewardess is they're not an option I get in this plane. So there goes the uh, life jacket. Now I've got to put my control lock back in. That's actually best done from inside believe it or not. Plenty of uh, planes have taken off with the control locks in and it very rarely ends well. That's it. Control lock locked. So I'm just going to double check, I've turned everything off because the last thing I want to do is come back and find the battery flat. So let's get out. I'll show you this has got a... To prevent me taking off. To prevent me taking off this control lock, it locks into the pedals like that. And it locks into the uh, control column like that. And then there's a steel extension that fits that comes out over the uh, ignition switch. So you literally can't put the key in the ignition switch until you've taken the control lock off, which I think is very good. The more observant of you will have noticed that uh, the farmer's been out and actually trimmed the grass under the plane while I've been flying. So he's taken the opportunity to do that. Something on the ground over there. What? Oh, that's what fell out of my bag. The iPad. Hmm. Oh, well, it's by far and away the most expensive thing I've had to slide out of the bag. It went down the, out the front of the bag and down between the slats. Talking of which, we have to sort of push them in to put the plane away.
to stop insects making their nests up the inside. Same for these. Don't want mortar bees laying lava inside my static tubes. So, that's it, plankton for an ice cream. It's uh, 20 to five now, so, I don't know what time did I take off, about two? No, earlier than that. So I told them I was going over lunchtime. So I must have gone over about one o'clock. Sorry about the camera work. It's terrible, isn't it? <laughs> Never mind. So that's giving you a little insight into uh, what I do in my spare time. <laughs> Actually, what I do in my spare time is trying to earn the money to do the flying. Because they don't do an awful lot of flying. But I do, I don't know, go about 10 or 20 hours a year. Which doesn't sound like much, but it is. The, the uh, official minimum requirement is only five. So, okay. Right. Well, I'm going to say cheerio. Have one last quick look round. Yes. Quiet as a grave. Nobody here. There's usually somebody here working on the... Doing their plane up or something. But uh, back to work tomorrow anyway. Got a big job on tomorrow. Talk to you soon. Bye.